Yeah, good morning. Thanks, Alicia. Um, we kick off the West African segment of the show with a review of the BRVM performance in the first half of 2013 and what to expect going forward. But just before that, let's take a quick look on how markets and currencies in the region have been traded. Well, as you can see from the graphs, the markets in the region have done pretty well in the first half of the year. The BRVM 10, BRVM year-to-date return is now 27.8%. That's compared to 27.6 for Nigeria and, of course, 56.7 in Ghana. Drivers of the market's performance included key financial results from some of the big companies in the regional bourse. And to review the BRVM market so far this year and what to expect going forward, I'm joined from our Johannesburg studios by Nathaniel Inyaka, his head of investments at FMI Africa. Thank you so much, Nathaniel, for joining us. And as we can see, the market has done pretty well this year. Uh, at some point, it was the third best performer, but given the decline we've seen in Nigeria recently, it's now, interestingly, the second best performer. And it has been driven by the results we have seen so far. So I want to just get your take on the first half and, the, and what, what we can take away from the performance as we go into the second half. Yes, uh, good morning, Wally. Uh, definitely the BRVM this year has performed uh, very well. I mean, the first half has uh, really been driven by the uh, largest stocks in the BRVM, BRVM 10 index, uh, companies such as ETI, the companies such as Solibra, you know, the, the large cap companies, and really the key drivers behind the performance of the market, which did about, I think, about 27% uh, year to date uh, to the end of June, has really been... Um, the, the, the strong results released by these companies, you recall last year ETI had kind of uh, mediocre like last year results and um, right. yes, and Sonatel itself also had kind of mediocre results and was being impacted by the tax. But I mean, they came to the party, the December 2012 results, ETI uh, results bottom line was, was quite, uh, quite impressive and uh, Sonatel was quite impressive. So definitely the, the large cap stocks came to the party and as a result it drove the whole market up. Right. Do you get the sense, though, that liquidity has improved in th this year? I think that has, that's usually a big challenge for investors going into this market, the liquidity of the stocks that they can pick up. And I think because of that, a lot of people tend to focus more on the likes of ETI and Sonatel. Liquidity really improved. I mean, uh, in the month of uh, March, I think that was actually posted kind of uh, a record high in terms of uh, traded volume on that market, traded value, that is. Uh, and uh, you could see that uh, with the programs such as the, um, the, the infrastructure program in Cote d'Ivoire that was instituted some time, is it last year or two years, two years back, there was more focus in other sectors, not just uh, confined to the BRVM10, where the likes of the electricity company CIE, where the SODCs, where the transport sectors. People were trying to now uh, move right. out of just the core stocks and actually start going into other, other sectors in the which are you know which which are uh, small market capitalizations but still the companies remain relatively right. small so uh, major players would still play around the brvm 10 stocks all right so let's talk about the potential for more growth this year what, what's your take on the valuation of the market across the, across sectors i think really when you look across sectors the market has really kind of come up it's still not expensive because we had also the the adjustment in terms of the agricultural stocks, which were really poor performers in the first half, thanks to the rubber price and the palm oil price that really retraced quite sharply uh, last year and still part of this year. So you find as a market, the valuation is still not uh, that high, but definitely smaller stocks that really had a run. I mean, we had stocks such as CIE that had significant runs last year. They have really kind of reached their peak at you know, at the current status and either maybe need to uh, get uh, new larger projects which they need maybe more, more, more capital to come into the business. 
but really the largest stocks, there's still potential. I mean, ETI still has got a lot of, uh, a lot of growth still awaiting. We've now seen that Nigeria and Ghana have become right. the two largest uh, contributors to their business. Right. Okay, so if I'm um, rebalancing a portfolio or even constructing one, which stocks do you like right now going forward? Uh, obviously, if you're going to be balancing a portfolio on the BRVM, you have to look at the top 10, the top 10 stocks. And uh, I'll still, I'm still quite bullish on the banks. I'll still buy my ETI. I always say it's uh, in a slow motion uh, M&A process with NetBank. And we've already seen what the acquisition of TTB in Ghana and Oceanic Bank in Nigeria has done to their results. It's significant performance and really its share price has reached an all-time high. Uh, but still is still relatively cheap. If you look at it, the price to book value, it's still less than one, one times multiple. The other local banks, the, right. I would select the SGBCI above, uh, B, before BCCI. I think BCCI is a bit uh, in a weaker position. There's also the Bank of Africa groups, uh, though they are fragmented and they are listed, you know, the Benin listing, the Togo listing and the like. Um, I would still select them as a portfolio. Then I'll go back to the agriculture because uh, one of the reasons why you would invest on the BRVM is really get exposure to soft commodities such as rubber and palm oil. And I think uh, they have really right, retraced quite sharply. Yes, you can go okay, ahead. what about the telcos though, the likes of no, um, Sonatel and Onatel? What are your, what's your take on those ones? D definitely, so the Sonatel re remains uh, the bellwether stock. I mean, it has now paid uh, its dividend and has gone ex-div, so you'll find in the second half the share price really will be in a territory where it's not really uh, having much uh, upward trend, which is a good time to accumulate. I mean, it's, de it's dominant position and the recovery of the situation in Mali, which kind of affected, partly affected its uh, first half results, is, uh, is now uh, been done away with. Onatel, which was a loss-making telecom company, seems now to actually have come to the party and is now uh, profitable. So I also think uh, the telecom sector is definitely one you want to look at.